Hey all, Mr. Gibson here with the next lesson in cryptography. So today we're going to take a look at how we can use some mathematics, specifically some statistics and probability, to help us take a look at some characteristics of our text. And what we call this is frequency analysis. So going back to the very first activity in the course, we know that certain letters appear more often than others in the English language. And we're going to try and quantify that today because having specific values are going to be very helpful for us to figure out uh, how we can analyze ciphertext more, more quantitatively. So let's take a look at a few different books. Um, we're going to be working with a few books that are in the public domain, which means that we can easily pull up their entire text uh, free of copyright. So we're going to look at Pride and Prejudice. So I ran this through some Python code and generated the following bar chart, and we'll learn how to do that in this module, or in this unit. Um, and this our chart shows us that we've got a high percentage of E's, so it looks like somewhere between 12 and 14% of all letters in the book Pride and Prejudice are E, just under 8% are A's, looks like N and O are pretty popular, so are H and I, and so are R, S, and T. And it turns out that if we were to pick a completely different book, like Alice in Wonderland, we see the same patterns. The individual percentages might vary just a little bit, but Again, we see A and E are pretty high up there, so are H and I, N and O, and R, S and T. And if we go to Frankenstein, again, a little bit different, but mostly the same patterns, and Little Women, no different. So we're going to see that English language as a whole has a pretty standard percentage of character distribution. So we can see here, this is just a, a table pulled off of Wikipedia, that if we take a really large volume of text, so maybe we, we take like an entire library full of books and we do this for it, that the English language kind of settles down into these percentages here. So we can kind of read that fine print that A is about 8.167% of all letters that are in, in the English language. Um, e is the highest at around 12.7, Z is pretty low at about 0.077%, and we've got everything that ranges in between. So this kind of bar chart on the right is what we're going to refer to as the standard distribution of English letters. And this is going to be helpful as we move forward. So let's take a look at how knowing the standard distribution of the English language can help us learn a little bit about our ciphertext. So here we have on the ciphertext is the entire text of Pride and Prejudice run through a Caesar cipher using a key of three. And I've highlighted corresponding bars from the standard distribution, so our, our E's in the standard distribution are roughly 12 point something percent, and we can find the corresponding bar in the ciphertext, and that is mapped to H. And we can see, well, what's, what's the relationship is that those letters are three apart. And if you know anything about the Caesar cipher, that shouldn't be too surprising. The way that that cipher works is that we increase the value of our plain text letter by 3. So if E is normally 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, and 7 maps to H in the cipher text. And we do that for all of the letters. So using an additive cipher like Caesar preserves the order of our plain text when we get to the cipher text. And what I mean by that is we can see the same patterns. We used to have an A and an E that were kind of relatively big spikes near each other. Now we have a D and an H. We used to have an H and an I in the plain text or in the standard distribution, and now we see that at K and L. And an O in the standard distribution are now at uh, Q and R, and R, S, and T in the plain text or the standard distribution are now at U, V, W in the cipher text. We can see similar patterns when, if we were to use a key of 7 or a key of 22, those bars just keep shifting down, wrapping around to the beginning. And if what this is really helpful is that if we don't have this, the um, plain text distribution, it doesn't matter because we know the standard distribution is always going to be the same. So if we were able to collect a ciphertext and we were trying to figure out what algorithm was used or what key was used, we can really quickly look at this and say, well, here's a ciphertext. We can see those kind of order-preserved spikes. We can see the K and the O kind of go back to the A and the E, the R and the S go back to the H and the I, and so on. So that's how we know it's Caesar. And then the fact that we know the key, we can, do, we can figure that out by, very, by counting how many spots O has shifted over since we think that's from E. So if, if that's true, if we think this high frequency spike at the letter O in the ciphertext maps back to E in the plain text, we can just count that those are 10 units apart. So that must mean that the key that was used in the Caesar cipher was 10. 
Now this gets a little bit trickier when we're dealing with ciphers with multiplication. What we do with multiplication is that we lose that order preservation of the bars. We can see that here, here's our standard distribution of characters, and then here's a ciphertext created using Pride and Prejudice with a multiplicative key of three. And we can see that while it's easy for us to identify that the M in the ciphertext likely came from the E and the standard distribution or in our plain text, that that is not really enough for us to figure out the key if we didn't already know it. And you can also see that even though M we think is E, the other bars are, are kind of almost randomly scattered about. They don't have the same HI spike or the NO spike or the RST spike. All of those bars are, are really mix-matched in a way that, that makes it hard to figure it out. It turns out this actually is enough for us to figure out um, that the key is three. We'll talk more about that in a future lesson. But it does get even harder when we start looking at affine ciphers. So here's a cipher text that was created using affine with an additive key of two and a multiplicative key of seven. And again, we could quickly spot the likely candidate for what we think E in the cipher text maps back to, in this case, also E in the standard distribution. But there's not a lot of other information just looking at this bar chart that might help us figure out what the two keys were if we didn't know them. Like in this situation, here's a bar chart where I didn't tell you the keys. And we might be able to guess that M in this cipher text is E in the standard distribution. But that's about all we can figure out by looking at this. We don't have a lot of other information that we're able to tell from the bar chart. And that's how we're going to get started using frequency analysis. We'll continue to build on this and find ways to, to use these bar charts to help us determine the keys either algebraically or computationally. But it's the first step in the right direction for our journey on cryptanalysis. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.